needs no introduction. I'm going to do it anyway. Chris Packham is here. You want to get under the skin of MPs today? Well, we do. We've got a very important message to convey to them um, when it comes to climate breakdown. And I think, as your news has been shown, it's come home to roost, certainly here in Europe. Madrid's under an extreme weather warning at the moment. We've seen flooding in Las Vegas, a desert city. And obviously, you wouldn't want to be at the Burning Man Festival at the moment. So. What all of the advice says is that we've got to leave fossil fuels in the ground. And I'm keen to listen to the advice from the source of that advice. So I've helped to assemble, I hope, as many as 100 scientists to gather at midday on Parliament Square. And we've issued a, an offer to all of our elected representatives to come out and have a chat about the truth behind tr climate breakdown and what we really should be doing at that point. And, and, and our mission really today is to get the message across is that no new oil, no new oil, a transition away from our dependence on fossil fuels into renewables as quickly as possible. This government would say, hold your horses. No one's doing as much as us. We are leading the charge when it comes to uh, being ne uh, neutral. Well, the government would say that, but their Climate Change Committee, chaired by Lord Deben, doesn't say that at all. Um, he has led uh, a ruthless investigation into their targets and their uh, mission at the moment, and it's very clear they're not doing enough. He says they lack uh, leadership and they lack will and they lack direction in terms of those policies. And I think when you look at that and scrutinise it, 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 it stands up. And certainly at this point, when the UN and all of the scientists have said that we should be leaving fossil fuels in the ground, um, the Secretary General of the UN has called further extraction economic and moral madness. Um, to issue 100 new licences for potential oil and gas at some stage in the future and commission a coal mine is not what we need to do if we're going to meet any of our agreements, any of our targets, both domestically and, of course, globally. Now, to that end, do you support direct action by people like Just Stop Oil? They've lost support of the of the public. Well, I, I support people who are standing up and telling the truth, so long as no one is harmed and it's peaceful, direct action. Uh, Just Stop Oil have been trying to keep this in the, the media domain so that people like myself have the opportunity to talk about what we're talking about now. Um, and we are talking about Just Stop Oil, so I could say to you that whether they're aggravating the general public or not, they've given us a platform to talk about the fact that we don't need any more oil. We need to instigate this rapid transition to renewables as, as rapidly as possible. Even if we do commission new oil now, it will take 28 years to come online. There's no guarantee that that will offer any energy security to the UK whatsoever, because once those licences are granted, the oil there belongs to the companies. They can sell it to who ever they want to, they don't have to sell it to us. And when it comes to very large oil fields like Rosebank, that's owned by Equinor, and if they get permission to drill it, the money will be essentially going to Norway. And we'll make some tax revenue from it. This is not about energy security. If we want energy security, we need to invest in those renewables. They're providing cheaper energy than oil and gas at, at the moment, and, and that's where we need to go. And even those people who are working in the oil and gas sector when it comes to North Sea, uh, exploration and exploitation are uh, asking for a way out. They understand that the transition needs to be done. And it's time for us to invest in those communities and invest in new jobs, not bad business and bad old jobs as, as we've had for so long. So what do you want it to look like? What More wind farms, onshore wind farms? Of course, he's looking at that. Well, we do need more onshore wind farms. Offshore wind farms produce energy nine times cheaper than, than gas. There's no doubt about that. But it's horses for courses. We know that. When we are making this transition, our landscape is going to change. Now, where we allow it to change... I mean, obviously, I have concerns about where we site wind farms, both offshore and on, on, onshore, because I have a passion for birds. Migratory birds can have problems with wind farms. We've learned a lot of lessons there. Solar is also have become a lot more affordable. It's very rapid to... To, to implement uh, that technology. I mean, the roof of this building and every other building in London could be covered with solar panels. And there are lots of places where we could put these where they're not going to cause any environmental or ecological damage. But that's 
one thing is for sure, you know, there's no point in worrying about where we put them if we've got no reason left to put them there because the world is in climate breakdown. And we're beginning to see that, as you know. This year, temperature records are being broken all over the world, less ice than ever before. And um, what the scientists are, are saying and what they'll be telling our, our elected representatives this lunchtime is that all of these things have come on a lot more quickly than their climate modelling would suggest. We're in deep, deep trouble and now is the time to act. And what's your demonstration going to look like? Are you going to get up to some mischief? No mischief today at all, no. Uh, the scientists will be clearly wearing white lab coats so that we can see who the scientists are. Mm. Um, we'll have a photo call with a no new oil banner, but this is unrepresentative. This is just me and a bunch of scientists saying, look, these are the people with their fingers on the pulse of this issue. Please come and talk to them. And we're hoping that MPs will see this as an opportunity to show that they do mean business. And we, of course, we have a new energy secretary, uh, secretary Claire Coutinho, uh, you know, essentially pretty much first day in the job. Wouldn't it be great if she came out to do a photo call with the scientists? Because mm. she has you know, not shown any sign so far that she's against the government's net zero uh, plans. But we've got to stay on target with these things. You know, we're 1.2 degrees centigrade over pre-industrial levels yeah. now. And there's a five, only a 5% chance left that we're going to keep it to 1.5. And most of the scientists are saying it could be two degrees higher by 2050 and more than three by the end of the century. That's deep, deep trouble, OK? We've really got to take some action. So this is an opportunity for a peaceful conversation between the scientists and our elected representatives. And I sincerely hope they take it. OK, it's great to see you as always. Thanks very much Thank indeed. You. Boy. Our customers collect Tesco club card points for every phone bill. Shadow leader of the House of Commons, what will he be by the end of the day? Oh, well, the country is in a serious mess and we've got so many problems ahead of us. I know that what Keir will have been focused on is choosing the top team that is going to help him to fulfil those five missions that he set out. I mean, goodness doesn't the country need it. Just today we're talking about schools. One of the five missions is to make sure that no child is left behind, that we give every child the opportunity to I'll thrive. Come on to schools. What job All of fancy? that. I want to serve in whatever position Keir chooses to put me in. The Labour Party, in my view, is the single greatest party that the world has ever known. I would like to serve in a Keir Starmer Labour cabinet, if that is what's, what Keir would like. But I will serve in whatever position he thinks I'll be used. I said to the team this morning, that's exactly what you would say, word for word. Do you not fancy one of the great shadow offices of state? Genuinely, all I want is a Labour government, Kay. I mean, I think that it can't come a moment too soon. We've seen absolute chaos over the summer. You know, every single one of the Tories' weeks has gone horribly wrong. We had a crime week in which a former Tory leader talking announced about breaking Labour, crime. We're talking about the and, government. And we need Why a Why do you need government? a reshuffle? We need a Labour government and we need to make sure that Keir feels that he's got the right team around him for the circumstances we're in now that can take us through the general election and into government if we're fortunate enough to be given Why do you need privilege. a reshuffle, do you think? Um, I mean, I think uh, over the course of time, events change, don't they? We've got new challenges ahead of us. We've had the terrible Tory chaos of the, the mortgage crisis, um, the way that the economy has been treated. We've got challenges ahead of us. But, I mean, goodness, we've got sewage in the, in the rivers. We've got school roofs crumbling. We've got a mental health crisis. And none of these problems are being tackled by this government. They are just drifting without any sign of a plan whatsoever. So we need to have the team around here that is ready to take on those challenges, to give our kids that... So Great why is Lisa tackle climate change. Keir will make those decisions. He will have been thinking about it very, very carefully. If we're going to tackle climate change, if we're going to give children a great future, we need Keir to feel like he's got the right team around him. We need the right people in post. Are you going to commit to a multi-billion pound spending plan for new schools? Well, do you know what? When we came in in 1997 to form a new government, we had to pick up a mess in the school estate then. There were buckets under leaky roofs at that point. Now. That Building Schools for the Future plan, do you know, if it had been continued instead of cancelled by the Tory government in 2010, all the secondary schools that are currently being, being under investigation, they would have been dealt with. We would have had the refurb. So you'll reinstate So by it 2020, then. well, unfortunately, as of today, 
we still don't actually know the full extent of the damage. We still don't have a list published by the government. I do hope that we have one soon. If we don't get one voluntarily by the government today, we will push them to that on Wednesday in our vote. Now, once they've done that, we might be in a position to be able to say just what the damage is. But, you know... I I'm really speaking wonder. more generally than that. I'm asking you about whether you're going to reinstate the multi-billion pound spending plan for new schools. Do we really think that the Tory government is going to let schools continue that long? I mean, a general election could be 14 months away. They're going to do nothing between now and then. But what because you, we I'm don't know what about, the damage is. I'm asking is what you guys are going to do. And I don't know what we're going to do because we don't know if even today the full scale of the problem. The first thing we would do would be to come clean with parents, staff and pupils and publish the list. Only then can we start to assess exactly how much is going to need doing and by when. We wouldn't have cancelled the Building Schools for the Future programme. That was investing in our children's future and the Tories chose to cancel it. Now, this is a priority for any government. To reinstate it. We don't know what state the economy is going to be in and nobody, no parent, no child, no teacher would you expect us. You can't criticise the government so, yes, for not building schools the government. if you're not going to say that actually what you will do is reinstate that building plan. They cancelled the Building Schools for the mm. Future plan under Rishi Sunak as Chancellor funding for school refurbishment was halved in 2021, by which time they already knew about the RAC. Yes, I can hold them responsible for those two things because those are choices and politics about choices. They chose to cancel building schools for the future. And you they chose, as a Labour government, to reinstate it. And when we get our hands on the economy and we can actually see what mess they've left us and when we can see what the state of the damage is, we'll be able to assess what we can do. In the meantime... We always we remember that have, letter from... Was it Leah Byrne who said there's no money left? We do have approach which I think people in the public trust, which is that we will not make unfunded spending commitments. That's the right thing to do, because at the moment, without growth, without a decent level of growth, we don't have the public finances that we should have. Last autumn's disastrous Tory mini-budget has absolutely decimated public finances even further than before, as well as personal finances and mortgages. Now, if we hadn't had that, we'd okay. be in a different position. So the Education Secretary this morning said that she's not worried about deadly asbestos being exposed by crumbling concrete. The leader of the Education Union says that he is. What's Labour's position? Well, I think everybody should be worried about asbestos and I think it's it's really quite extraordinary of, of the Secretary of State to say that and to be so cavalier with people's fears. There are ways of treating and managing the risk from asbestos, but just dismissing parents' very reasonable fears, which they will have today. I wonder how many parents really trust what the government is saying today, given that they've had months to come clean about the reinforced concrete problem. Why would anybody trust them today on this? I, I find it absolutely staggering that Gillian Keegan appears, the Secretary of State, Rishi Sunak's Secretary of State appears to be just so weak on getting a grip on this problem that parents are left in the dark for yet another day. What about this attack, Anne? Is it completely necessary, the one having a pop at Rishi Sunak saying he doesn't care about kids? He's had years to fix this problem. As Chancellor, he halved the budget for school refurbishment. As Prime Minister, he's known that this was a problem. He had the chance to vote with the Labour for the Labour Party's motion back in May and actually support coming clean with parents. We could but be months Do you think your child's away. school should be safe? Rishi Sunak doesn't. I mean, of course he does. That's a question every parent will be asking today, considering that they will know that Rishi Sunak's had this information for some time and that even today his education secretary has still not published But you list. don't think the Prime Minister is thinking, you know what, I don't care, kids go to school and it's not safe? It's a valid question for everybody to ask, because why would he not take action? I don't understand. I don't understand why they cancelled the Building Schools for the Future programme. We knew that there were 10,000 schools that had been built, school buildings built before 1941, that would come to the end of their design life in 2020. Why would any government that cares about children's future cancel that programme? First-class education needs a first-class building to work to learn in, and children should be going back to school today excited to learn, thrilled to learn, and instead what they see is that the government didn't even bother didn't even bother to tell them what was going on in their school. Over the summer, in the previous few months, in the previous few years, that beam in a school in Kent fell down in 2018. Now, sadly, there was a Tory government in charge then, there's a Tory government in charge now. A Prime Minister can choose. Politics is about choices, it's about giving people hope for the future. And today, for that child who's supposed to be going back to school, where is that? Where has that gone? It's a valid question to ask Rishi Sunak. Why haven't you got a grip? Fancy shadow education secretary? I think Bridget's doing a fantastic job, as she's shown over the weekend. And I think we've got some great people in the Parliamentary Labour Party. Keir will make that decision, and I'm absolutely certain that he will make decisions that are based on what's best for the country. OK. Um, chat to you again soon, hopefully. Yes. Great to see Thank you. you. Thanks Lovely so much indeed.